When I would teach astronomy to children, one of my favorite ways to begin the year was to say, wouldn't it be fun if we could reach up with a gigantic marker and draw on the sky? We could put a dot for the sun, a dot for the moon, we could draw trails, we could make a recording of where everything goes in the sky. This is where science begins. This is where astronomy began millennia ago with careful and systematic observation and record keeping of everything that goes on in the sky. Well, with children, I could spend a fun lesson or two trying to think of alternatives that we can't draw in the sky. What could we do? One thing we could do might be to put stones for, to mark sunrises and sunsets. Maybe we could take a bowl and put something in the middle to cast a shadow, and then we could draw on the bowl instead of drawing on the sky. Another thing we could do in the modern world is just take a bunch of photographs. We could make a time-lapse photograph of how things move through the sky. For example, this is a time-lapse photograph I made one day of a sunrise in Southern California. I took one picture just as the sun was rising, then a bunch more with a pair of sunglasses effectively on the camera, and I st stitched them all together to make this composite. So I would show this to students, and we could notice some interesting things, like for one thing, it doesn't go straight up and down. The sun crosses the horizon at an angle for some reason. We could also discuss things like if I tell you that I took the pictures every eight minutes, we could work out the sun goes its own diameter through the sky every two minutes or so. And one question that uh, we would always come up with is, well, what about the seasons? We've got a recording now of uh, what one sunrise looks like on one day, but isn't the sun higher in the summer and lower in the winter? Doesn't it do different things in different seasons? Well, let's figure that out by recording different sunrises in different seasons. So here's a time-lapse uh, composite, three composites I made of three different sunrises in the summer, the winter, and the fall. And we can notice some more curious things, like the tilt angle doesn't change, but the position does. The sun wobbles back and forth on the horizon with the seasons. It's far to the north in summer and far to, uh, far to the south in winter. Another question, of course, is well, what about the sunset? Well, here's an, a, a similar composite I tried to make of the sunset, uh, sunsets in California, the seasonal sunsets in California. It didn't turn out quite as well as the sunrise photo, but it gets the idea across. It's basically the same as the sunrise, but in reverse. And what about the sun in the middle of the day? Well, I could, we could talk about different ways to measure how high the sun is at noon by shadows or something. And finally, we reach the point where we want to put all the puzzle pieces together. What if we wanted to make one toy or one drawing, one representation, one model of the sun's highway across the sky? Well, it should look something like this. This is a little cartoon representation of the sun's path across the sky in summer and winter. Uh, what if we wanted to make a, a real toy version of this? Well, we could try making a, a paper dome, something like this, perhaps. This is a little paper dome that you could make. There are printouts for this on the website. I'll put a link in the description. And it's got the path across the, the sky marked on it here. Here's the summer path that the sun follows. Here's the winter path down here. Now the interesting, the really interesting thing is what happens if we take this dome, this little toy model, this pretend sky, and we turn it upside down and we put something in the middle to cast a shadow. So I've got a little a bowl here with the sun's path marked backwards on the bottom and a little point in the middle to cast a shadow. Now what happens if I put this out in the sunshine? When the sun rises over here in the east, it's going to cast a shadow. This tip is going to cast a shadow on the western wall of the bowl. And as the sun follows this path across the sky, the shadow will follow this path across the bowl. I have a working model of the sky now. The drawing of the sun's highway on the bottom, that can be like the gauge of a dial, and the thing in the middle casting the shadow, that's like a pointer or an indicator showing where is the sun right now uh, along its path. Where is the sun along the dial? I've got, out, I've got lines here to show the hours this way, and then the lines going this way, the curves going this way, show the seasons. On the winter solstice, the shadow should follow this curve, this one there, 
And on the summer solstice, the, the shadow should follow that curve. And then I've got uh, the other lines in between our one month intervals between the equinoxes and the solstices. So with a, a sundial like this, this represents not just a, a crude way to tell time. This is actually a scientific model of the sky. It's a model of the sun's path across the sky. It's a working model of the sky. And it can tell you not only the hours of the day by following how far around the arc the sun is, but also how, where are you in the solstice equinox cycle? How far is it to the next solstice or equinox? So this is a what's known as a hemispherical sundial. And the ancient Greeks made sundials like this two and a half millennia ago. They had their own working models of the sky two and a half millennia ago. Now this paper model, like any sundial, the exact design is going to depend on your latitude because the tilt, uh, the tilt of this wheel, the tilt of this circle, is going to depend on your latitude. How far north or south are you from the equator? So if you want a, a hemispherical sundial for your backyard, these lines have to be drawn at the right angle for your latitude. But I have designs for this for various latitudes on my website, and I'll put a link in the description. The hemisphere is really hard to make. It's a complicated shape, both for the ancient Greeks who had to carve it out of stone, and for us to try to make it out of paper. It would be much simpler if we just had a flat version, a flat piece of paper. Well, that's going to be much easier to build, but now the marks are going to look a lot weirder. So this is an example of an ancient Greek flat sundial. It's got all the same information on it. I've got, if we pretend that we're putting a vertical pole here in the middle, I, I used a triangle for these paper versions. I have a triangle on the tip. The corner at the top is like the top of a pole. But in ancient Greek versions, they just, you just have a vertical pole or post or stick or something in the middle. And the top of it casts a shadow. And that shadow falls somewhere along this grid pattern. Again, this is like the, the scale of a gauge or the scale of a dial. These are the hours. As the sun rises over here in the east, uh, the shadow will start over here in the west. And as the sun passes this way across the sky, the shadow will pass that way across the dial, one line per hour. And then in the summer, when the sun goes higher, the shadow will follow this curve. In the winter, when the sun stays lower, the shadow will follow this curve. These two dark curves, the, the boundary curves, those are the curves for the solstices. And then on the equinoxes, in the spring and fall, the shadow will follow the straight line in the middle. So this is much, much, much easier to make, uh, but the marks look a little weirder. This is an example of what the Greeks called a pelicanon. I think I'm getting that right sundial. The pelicanon was their word for a double-bladed axe because they looked at this pattern on the ground. Thought, that looks like a double-bladed axe. I'm choosing to call it a, a butterfly sundial because I'm comparing this to a butterfly. I'm not really sure if I like that name better. It's more familiar than pelicanon, but anyway, I'm going with butterfly sundial for now. So I have printouts for these as well on my website. Again, the design is going to depend on your latitude. If you live at the equator, this is just going to be a, a stripe right across the middle. If you live near the poles, this, is, this butterfly pattern is going to have to arc uh, around the outside. So both of these paper sundials represent my own updated versions of classic ancient Greek uh, stone-carved sun tracking instruments. They're both essentially models of the sky. This hemispherical sundial is just an inverted model of the dome of the sky overhead. And this flat one is just what you get if you flatten this one. They both have this grid of markings on them. This represents the, the track or the trail or the highway of the sun across the sky. And they both have something in the middle to cast a shadow. If you think of this sun highway, this grid of markings, if you think of that like the scale of a dial, then wherever the shadow falls, that's like the needle of the dial showing you where the sun is in its progression. So I have uh, printouts for both of these on my website. Like any sundial, the design has to be prepared for your latitude. But I've prepared designs for a range of, of latitudes, and you can just select the one that's closest to your own. And you will have your very own 
sun tracking instrument.